leading the Demon Deacons in scoring. It may be PKs, but he just has a knack, and it's an art on his turn and get into the box, right? Yeah, absolutely. He's been really, really positive for the Deeks, and he can do a lot of things. His hold-up play is excellent with his back to goal. Uh, he can split defenders. His off-ball movement can get better, but has been bright, uh, and, and he's just showing capabilities to do a lot of different things. The Deeks probably need other players, though, Ty, to step up and provide an attacking threat to help Rold Mitchell not have to carry right. the goal scoring load. I mean, they're getting the shots. It's just, yes. again, it's just trying to finish. Yes. A and you know, some would say, well, you got to see a better conversion rate. But um, you know, I'd much rather have the fact that you're down at the doorstep and keep knocking rather than not even in the same block, right? Right, absolutely. And, and attacking threat mm. will get you chances eventually. The uh, I mean, it's, you know, finishing is one of those things that's just, it's the most fickle part of the game. It comes and goes no matter who you are. It, all the way up and down the, the ranks of soccer, from youth leagues to the pros. I mean, you look at today. Outstanding slide tackle there by Swinehart. That was gorgeous. He is a very good defender. But uh, you, Ty, you look at the pros just today. I mean, Champions League group stage started right. today. You have AC Milan held scoreless by Newcastle despite shot? 25 yeah. <laughs> shots That's right. and, and over two expected goals for the, the game. And then you have Man City put up 20, I think it's 22 shots in a half with two and a half expected goals over 45 minutes and couldn't score. They ended up getting three goals, but still, uh, you know, this is a thing that it, it permeates its way through the whole game. Finishing is just one of those talent. Oh, they missed a run from I, I saw that too, yeah. Now, Wake Forest is wearing green. You're, they're, do not adjust your television or your iPads. Uh, they're wearing green to raise awareness. And for the first time in program history, Wake Forest will be wearing green jerseys tonight as the program hosts mental health awareness match. So the special green Wake Forest Nike jerseys are also available for bidding at GoDeeks.com. And the proceeds from the jerseys will go to supporting the Trinity Center. And, I, and that's it's such an important cause, Ty. It's something that's close to both of our hearts. I know that um, from ourselves and, and loved ones. And this will go towards helping Trinity Center provide mental health services to uninsured or underinsured individuals so everyone can get care. It's a really important cause and people should think about supporting. Well done, Wake Forest. Well done by Flax playing the square ball as Kojima wanted one extra touch and lost it. And now Liberty, they want to quickly get up the pitch, although numerically it was clearly on the side of the Demon Deacons. They were trying to focus on Kone, Leo Kone, what a story coming over from Liberia. They play with Minnesota United. A big time, well, not big, but pretty good prospect out of Minnesota. But uh, Coach Finley really, really had a lot of great things to say about him. And we've got a foul and possibly a card. Yes, this should be the first booking of the game, Ty. That was a, a clear tactical foul here to stop a, a promising attack. Wow. wow. I guess the referee says, look, it's too early for that to be a card. I'm not so sure I agree, but I understand the official wanting to not go to the pocket just yet. Uh -oh. that, that was a, a, a really big foul, though, in terms of the fact that Forbes was through mm -hmm. on, on the left flank. He had nobody in front of him, and by pulling him down, that stopped a counter. In my mind, that's a booking. Stricker comes over from Dallas, Texas. Skyler Stricker. The officials today will be uh, Lucas Feather, assistant referee, Kevin Maurer, and then Eric Barnes. As Flax sends a very risky pass. It's cut out and then losing the balance, which then became a fortuitous misplay, which then goes to Wake Forest. Now right back to Liberty. Referee let him play there, but it should have been a handball because the guy fell on the ball. Nice settle by Trot. Carlos Trot there wearing number five. A little bit sloppy here from the Deeks so far. They're showing really good attacking intent. Forbes looks really active here through the first couple of minutes. But Ty, those 
passes, you can't make those mistakes in your own third, your own half, because they give really quality opponents chances. There's another one. It's just a very, very risky pass. Wake Forest trying to break those lines, but that comes with a lot of risk. As Liberty now will start to build in this midway line. Kone coming all the way to the touch line. Good looking snap. for a probing pass, and Garrison Tubbs, what he has done all year long. How many times have we seen making that? that step? Yeah, that he makes that step, and then sometimes he'll drive forward on the ball if nobody closes him down. He'll take the space if it's afforded to him. He's going to create a move himself. That's the Garrison step for all defenders to come up. <laughs> Now, we talked about this as deja vu because in 2021, Wake Forest just came off a 1-1 tie. It was on the road, but it was to NC State. They took on Liberty that Tuesday night with Clemson coming to town on the next match. So it's very similar stories. And Liberty was riding a four-game winning streak in that particular year. This year, they're looking for they're four straight if they get the victory against Wake Forest. The Deacons who took on the defending champions, the Syracuse Orange, and really did an outstanding job against them. We'll get into that in those stats a little later, but the last victory was 1999 for the Demon Deacons against Liberty. Here's Roald Mitchell getting in behind Mitchell. Oh, he tried to put his foot at Flax. Just a little left. Flax has continuously told me and looked at me, it's coming, it's coming, and it almost came there. You're not going to get a better opportunity this time. First of all, that is a really difficult opportunity for Roald Mitchell to try and collect that. And then the goalkeeper just loses the ball. And I think Flack saw the window really, really small between the goalie and the defender there who was marking the near post. That is a gift of an opportunity. And Flax just could not put it home. Blake Franzen, the keeper, he was the keeper that started in 2021. Last time they matched up. Made a career high of seven saves in that 3-1 victory over Longwood. It's Flax. We'll look up. He's got Thomas, and he will play it. Thomas looking for the support with Cummins, and that goes out of bounds. But last season, Franzen, who's from Johannesburg, South Africa, six foot two. He's been going back and forth between Franzen as well as Moore. And we talked to Coach Finley about it. He said they're both good. It's just a little bit of we've got great goalkeepers, but we're looking for that one to make that extra step up. Yeah, sometimes you got to look for a player to really make the job his own. And when both of them don't quite get there, you just keep rotating between them. It can be tough, though, because when you're not getting a, a consistent run of games, it can be hard to get in a rhythm. But Coach Finley... You know, he's, he's engineered some really quality seasons and knows what he's doing. Yeah, he's 1-1-1 one, one, and one against Bobby. Going back to 2015, of course, he coached at NC State before he made his way to Liberty. Also coached at Butler. Started his career at Mars Hill. And has his son on the team. How did that not go out of play? spin on the ball there was like a bunt that just dropped down the line and never rolled over into the dirt. Let's watch this matchup with Bo Cummins going up against Kone. Yeah, those two have gone at it a lot so far here early on. Kone has been a key figure in this Liberty buildup. Uh -oh. Turnover. Very, very Risky spot that's uh, at least to put up an attempt there by Finley. Give, Gabe Finley. Give Liam O'Gara a ton of credit there because he used his body 
to step in the way and disrupt the buildup there once the turnover happened. That was a, a huge part of that chance being smothered. Now Cummins' path may have crossed with Kone because for a brief moment, uh, Cummins was with Minnesota United Academy. That's where Kone came from. Earl Mitchell, a hold up play and then running on. The idea was there, just trying to make that run. Yeah, and, and go look, look at Ogara just body his defense or his mark off. That's Eberly who generated the turtle. Cut inside on his right, and Ogara just stepped right between him and the ball, used his body perfectly. There was another Liberty player there who ended up getting the shot off, but it wasn't nearly as good of a chance because Eberly was cooking and he had his right foot queued up. Once again, Wake Forest with the switch. Cummins going to continue to pinch in. Running down is Huss, running down Tubbs. Here's Ogara. Michael Huss hasn't really been involved on the ball yet, but he has been ex extremely active with his pressing. And he's caused a lot of problems for the Deeks at the back. And that's one of the uh, keys that we talked to Coach Finley. He wanted to make Wake Forest uncomfortable, a lot of pressing. As Kojima plays it back to his support. Cummins with a 1-2 with Flax. And now Wake Forest will once again push it backwards to reset. There's Ogara right in the center of the circle. He wouldn't go with a big ball. Probing pass, two probing passes, and Thomas had a good look. Spilled twice. And Cummins right outside of the 18 sends a diagonal ball to Flax. Flax looking, he scoops it to Roll Mitchell, and Roll Mitchell with a banger that just goes left of the frame. How did that not find the net? I mean, what a touch by Roald Mitchell. First, goalkeeper's got to figure it out a little bit because he's spilled a number of chances he should have had. Look at that. He pops it up yeah, to himself did. and then volleys it. That's expert level. Just wide left. I in. thought that's what he did, but I wasn't quite sure from where our angle is. But all right, Roald Mitchell's already starting to show off. It's still nil-nil, but... Yeah, that is world-class touch by Mitchell, who is one of the leading scorers in the nation, as well as the ACC. Mitchell from the Red Bulls Academy. Escribano. Oh, another great pass. Thomas has some options. Thomas, little extra touch. Has Cummins as a support, use a left foot to swing it across. Here's Flax, and Flax, here's Roll Mitchell. Bang, 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 it's 1-0. Deacons go on top. Wake Forest just peppering the goal mouth with shots, whether they're deflected, blocked, saved, spilled, whatever it might be, just keep sending it back on frame, and eventually Roll Mitchell just clobbers one into the back of the net, perfectly placed. Cooper Flax scuffed his, and it's, you watch it again, the goalkeeper had it. It was just gonna run right into the goalkeeper's hands, but it got blocked, and then runs right. Look at this, blocked, the goalie had it, and then it falls right to Roald Mitchell. If you're gonna clear it like that, mm -hmm. it's got to go away from danger. Instead, he clears it right to Roald Mitchell, and there's the finish. And that's again, Kyle, we talked about how they've expanded some of the, the soccer stats, right, and analytics. It's touches in the box and why and how that is crucial just to kind of get an idea of how your team is attacking. Absolutely. It's, you know, analytics need to be taken with a grain of salt. They always have to mean something, but there is a direct correlation between more touches in the penalty area mm -hmm. and more goals. It's just the way this game works. So Roald Mitchell with six goals. That will move him in the top 10 in the nation for goals. Leading the way is, leading the way in the nation is a player from Denver who we saw in the exhibition season. He is tied, Old Mitchell's also tied for the lead in the ACC and goal scored. 
Back to back years with a hat trick. What is in store for this match, Ed Kyle? We will see on that front. Liberty, very experienced team. 14 guys return back. You've got senior leadership, like this Liberty team who's expected to win the OVC. We'll get into that new conference for them coming over from the A Sun. But they are expected to win that conference, which is the right call. Uh, you add that with some good recruits. And I think this Liberty team, the, the, there is no, it's not a, it's not a, just a string of luck that the Liberty Flames have won three in a row. Turn by Mitchell. Mitchell looking. Sprays it to the right to Cummins. Cummins back to Mitchell. Mitchell! Off a half volley. Maybe very little rotation. Knuckled it. Went left of the post. Roll Mitchell's first touch tonight is spectacular. I mean, that touch, he pops it right up to himself and steadies the ball for a shot on goal. How about you look back to the, the first touch mm -hmm. where he volleyed it to himself, was incredible, went just wide, and then he had a first touch shot, which he scored with. His first touch has been sensational so far. You remember last season, he had a little case of getting down on himself, right? And he was not confident in some of his touches, but that is not the case for 2023. And of course, the Deacon faithful in Coach Bobby Muse. Hope that continues. There's Ogara. The Flames trying to answer back to level this up. And they have moved all the way up to the halfway line. Here's Kelly. Kelly, a freshman, very highly recruited. Playing with that Bermuda Triangle down there that can cause a costly turnover, but when you got Tubbs back there, you feel a little bit more at ease. Ogara. You always get the sense he's looking for that big bolt <laughs> to the flag, right? Yeah, those long balls. I mean, we've seen what Ogara can do from dead ball situations. He's selective, right. but has it in his locker. Good recovery by the Demon Deacons there. Immediately had three green jerseys. There to cut that one out. Here's Flax lays this one on a platter for Forbes. Maybe a little bit of softer touch, but it goes out of bounds. It will be a throw in for Liberty. There's Coach Muse looking on his ninth season. He knows how important the grind is and how important these matches are because he'll tell you, you know, these Tuesday games become traps and if you don't take it seriously, you're not going to come out with the outcome you want, and it will, could alter your season. But he was very satisfied with the draw against Syracuse. The kid, in his heart, he felt that his Demon Deacons should have won it. There is a cutout pass from Flax, taken away by Kelly. Numbers, Kelly slings this right, right in front of the 18. Here's Finley, and in space on that right side, and good recovery speed by Forbes, coming all the way down to clear that out. That is what you want to see if you're a coach, especially when you got your winger driving all the way back. Yeah, this is five on five here. It was five on four for a moment, and Forbes just comes barreling through an accurate tackle to end that chance. Just a little indecision from Liberty on the break. They, it, it wasn't like, you know, two on one counterattacks. You only have so many options on a two on one counterattack. You could pass or you could take a shot yourself. There, it was like four on three or five on four, and there's just too many options. Yes, Short circuited well. a bit. Long throw by Fastine, who came over from Louisville. Oh, another first touch. Look at that. Rolled Mitchell. Now it's 2v2. Him and Flax. His numbers trying to get back. Flax 
Mitchell. Oh, he tried to cut it across. Keeps it in. Kyle, you think there possibly could be a handball? And Liberty trying to desperately get it away from number nine as they now move into the half space. It, it looked like the defender went flying by and dispossessed Roald Mitchell with his arm. We'll, we'll take another look at that at some point, but that, I mean, it looked to me, and, and Mitchell made a, a quick little ask to the official about it as well. This one has sent up the touchline for Vonay, but, or Vonay, pardon me, but Cummins did a good job tracking back. How about the pass, though, from Cooper Flax to unlock Roll Mitchell on the chance? Look at this pass, first of all. There's no window for this, and he finds it anyways. This, that's oh, a handball. That's a handball. Uh, his arm, yes. now, it's tough because it is literally written in the rules that as a defender, you are allowed to support your body with your arm while sliding. That is considered a natural position but only when you're going to ground. He was on the ground, as it all happens bang, bang, right, in, in split seconds. So the referee has to determine what's a natural position and what's not. But it all, and plus it also disrupts. Completely. It's advantageous for, the, for, for Liberty. Though. Exactly, and that's the threshold, is does it provide the defense an advantage? It yeah, certainly did there. In my mind, great, that's great a handball, but it is written in the rules that allows that to be considered a natural position. And, and, and then another thing is they can't go to the replay unless it's already called. Right. So it's and not that they can throw a warning, I mean, a, a challenge flag. Part of the reason for that, Ty, is that you don't have a video review booth that can make recommendations, right? So you, you don't have somebody in your ear going, hey, you need to look at that one. Look at those two passes. Forbes. And offside call. I'm not sure who was... The guilty party. Two great passes, though, by the Demon Deacons. Quickly getting up the pitch. I'd love to see a challenge flag in, in, in college soccer. <laughs> that would be perfect for situations like that. Where, okay, you, you can't review a non-penalty call and turn it into a penalty, but the coach can challenge. I think that'd be... Ooh. An interesting addition. You see that timing, though, yep. on that outside is, uh, I think that was Fastina Farmer waiting for that pass to be played by Ogara and then almost took it away. And that was Farmer. Farmer goes out, and here comes Gora Gora. He's the one that had the assist. Probably overlooked because that pass that he was able to connect with Huss was world class too. Right over the top, onto the far stick, and all Huss really had to do was just poke his boot at it, and that was the game winner. So Gora Gora comes in. Another super sub for Coach Finn. Liberty down one. And looking with some urgency to make this a 1-1 contest. Good switch over to Gora Gora, who's challenged by Escribano. Escribano, I think we can both agree he was the man of the match on Saturday night. He was everywhere he defensively. Was. He was all over the field, made a number of defensive plays. He's not a guy that's going to get forward nearly as much as uh, Bo Cummins or when Jelani Forbes played it at fullback, but he picked his spots well and had a pretty good match. Yeah, he was really, I mean, he was also involved in some of those attacks. This is still headed into the 18, and diving to his right is Trace Alpin to punch that one away. Ty, we highlighted the weight defense in the open. But we failed to mention Trace Alphen, who is part of that. He has made some huge saves this year. And there's another one. That may have snuck inside the far post had he not reached it. Inches from making it 1-1. Trace Alphen 
with a save, knocks it away, keeps it. 1-0 advantage of the home side. Five shots to two shots as the Deacons lead. They have done that all year, leading in the shot department. They attacked over and over and over again against Syracuse, but couldn't get a goal until Sidney Paris slipped inside the 18, drew the PK, and then buried it to make it 1-1. There was still 15 minutes remaining in that contest, but it went down as 1-1. One one. O'Gara turning. Gara and Swinehart have competed against each other in the USL 2 as Flax. Dummy. Some have, that was a beautiful dummy. Forbes, Flax deflected and then into the grasp of the goalkeeper, Franzen. How unlucky has Cooper Flax been in front of goal so far this year? We saw this last year with Garrison Tubbs. He had like double digit <laughs> opportunities from set pieces to try and get a goal finally bundled one home. Ticking down at just about 20 minutes remaining in this first half of the Deacons leading. All nil. A goal from Roald Mitchell. Who else? Giving him six goals on the season. Liberty. New member of the OVC. Ohio Valley Conference. And Kyle, we talked to Coach Finley, he said he was planning that schedule as an independent until March came and finally they found a conference to be, become home, which is, that has got to be a lot of headaches, right? Scheduling right now for non-revenue sports, just the way that the college landscape is, no. is a mess. I can't imagine. Well, he was saying, he was telling us, he said, you know, if, if you're independent, you're trying to find matches in October, late September, you can't because everybody's having conference play. So, luckily for them, they were able to join the Ohio Valley Conference and they are picked to win that conference. Ogara into a pocket of space. And he's allowed a lot of time as he scans. This one is played to Forbes. And Escribano is overlapped and moves upward. Kojima in the center. Kojima does have an option to the right. It's Cummins. Cummins trying to place this one into the 18. Good defense. Cummins trying to recover and get it back. Is Gora Gora moving over to this side. And we've got some substitutions for the Demon Deacons. The home side looks like Swallen and Wallet are coming in. As Kojima goes out. Yeah, Jose Kojima's, we've seen better from him. He, he's got another gear. He's got another level. And I think he's just yet to find it this year. Yeah, I mean, people think you, you have an injury and then boom, you're back to where you were before that injury. It, there is a process. It's a lot of, he may be physically ready, but mentally he's got to get back too. And sometimes that take takes a while. And hopefully it, for Wake Forest and Coach Musa, it, it will come back. But you could see it. I mean, you could see Kojima, flashes of the Kojima we saw last year. He's going to get there. It's Roald Mitchell. Make it two. The brace for number nine. That is number seven here in 2023. Roald Mitchell's shot is like a Mariano Rivera fastball. You know it's coming. You just can't stop it. It's it's inevitable. And and he just can't stop scoring right now. It's it's fantastic. He's I mean, he's the goal threat up front for Wake Forest right now, and defenses still just have not been able to figure out how to neutralize him. This comes from really from nothing. It's it's a, a poor touch by the defender, 
feeds him right through, and Roald Mitchell is positioned well to take advantage of that mistake. A bit unlucky by the Liberty back line, but he takes advantage. Look, uh, soccer gods will bless you if you are getting at the right place, right time. Uh, you, you will be surprised how that ball will found, find you, especially in expected goal situations, right? Expected goal. <laughs> I mean, now with seven goals, could it be and definitely expecting more? Might, it, might as well be his nickname, the, <laughs> the expected goal. XG. <laughs> well, I don't know if we thought this would be the score line here with about 17 minutes remaining in the first half that Wake Forest would lead 2-0 just on the history between these two clubs. A lot of time left, though, Ty, and they always say a two-goal lead is the most dangerous in this sport. Mm -hmm. Liberty has been very active in the press. They aren't pressing hard or pressing high, but when they do press, it's causing this Deeks back line a lot of problems. If they can capitalize on one or two of those mistakes, they'll be right back in this game. Jose Perez in the game now for Cooper Flax. Flax had a really, really positive first 20 minutes of this game. Nestrobono switching to the right side. A good press by Kelly. Able to spit that one away, knock it away, and then a slide tackle from behind. That is very reckless as that will be a card. Not sure. Swinehart, let me tell you, this guy, talk about energy. He is the definition of energy. Him and Kojima. I mean, as soon as that whistle is blown, they are running at 1,000 miles an hour. Swinehart. And he is not scared at all of um, putting his body out there. Maybe a little late. I thought it was from behind, but he's right. I mean, it was. He got a little bit of the ball, too, which I think is what he's arguing. But just completely upended the man as well. So sometimes referees are not always beholden to, well, you got the ball, so it's a clean tackle. They're trying to cut down on the dangerous plays. And so. Just getting a touch on the ball and dispossessing the opponent is not always the threshold for a legal tackle. Uh, he's pretty good at uh, textbook tackling. Uh, watching him through the years, especially USL 2, and then some of the guys, we, we obviously we did the one in 2021. Uh, he comes from a pedigree. His dad is a Hall of Famer at uh, the Charlotte Eagles, which ironically is where Finley played too, Kelly Finley, and then also was a player slash coach on the field. Here's Trot, try to turn away and send it up the pitch. And I also love the way his son plays, Gabe Finley. Of course, I have a soft spot for <laughs> short guys, but I mean, talk about energy too. All over the pitch, always running. It's Perez, Thomas has options. Thomas trying to get this one across. Well done by the defense from the Flames. It's Gora Gora looking for some help to send it up the pitch. And now Liberty going back to their defensive third. Look at the press by Roald Mitchell already with a brace. We mentioned this not too long ago. He already has a hat trick back to back years, and he needs one more for another one. Mitchell going in, maybe a little too physical with that bird wing, chicken wing. It's a little too much body in that. Not enough uh, play on the ball. Now, we talked to Roald Mitchell about kind of the, his art form of the turn and then what he expects. And it's exactly what I thought, right, going in. I was like, okay, you're turning with your long legs. If you got defensive players on you, you're turning. And if you're going straight 1v1 with the keeper, if you get any contact, it's bang and you're down to draw possibly PKs. And that's what he's gotten. Nice, well shot, a little bit driven low, scuffed. But a good look to say the least by Finley. Yeah, I think Finley had some options there. They had numbers. And the deep defense was a bit scattered. Decided to take it himself. Don't know if that was the best option. Uh, he's, but he's been very uh, 
trigger happy. Yes. And they, I mean, and that's good. And it's worked out for them so far this year. And, and he's one of many goal scorers in this Liberty team, and that's what makes them dangerous up front is that they have a number of players who can finish chances. Second shot for Findlay. There's Thomas. An extra touch trying to create something, and the ball take it away. Here's Swinehart. Swinehart, who is from Charlotte, North Carolina. Lake Forest once again working from the back. Let's see if that press comes. And it does. As Huss, the star in 2021. Been somewhat quiet here in the first half. Let's see how quiet he will be for the rest of the match. He just has a nose for, kind of like Rolf Mitchell, just finding his self inside the 18 in good spots to at least try one on frame. And that's why he's got four goals. Five, five points in the last two matches for us. Perez, Swallowing, calling for it. This is a great example of how the Deeks play defense with offense. Rest on the ball is such a good skill to have, and then all of a sudden you can crop up with a ball like that out of nowhere, sort of lull the other team to sleep. But they play such a good possessional style that even when it doesn't feel dangerous, there's a purpose to all this. They, when they have the ball, the opponent does it. And this is a form of defense. Escribano. Got some space in front of him, plays it back to his support. To Wallent and Swallen back to Wallent. Wallent had it poked away for a second. Here's Tubbs. One, one of the new tactical innovations in football, Roberto De Zerbi at Brighton has really become Love a, a buzzword. <laughs> and the reason why is his philosophy is very similar. It's we feel we're the most dangerous in counterattacks. Offside flag goes up there. Unless, at least I think they called on Sidney Paris, but unless he started from an offside position coming back. Yeah, they, back. Said, they okay. said over and back, yeah. Uh, but go and, ahead. And Roberto De Zerbi's philosophy is we feel we're most dangerous in counterattacks. So instead of waiting for the opponent to give us counterattack opportunities, why don't we just create transition while we're in possession, then we can control when we get them. And so they create transitional play in possession, which is kind of counter to the way you think counterattacks are meant to be, right? Counterattacks come off turnovers. That's just how you see them. But they, they say, well, how can we create counterattacks while we are on the ball? So Wake Forest, it's not quite the same, but they say we're going to sit and, and defend in possession. And then when things open up, we go right at it. And that's what you've been seeing here over the last five or ten minutes is they create their own quick-fire attacks while on the ball. They almost feel like counterattacks right. at some times. It's, it's actually pretty amazing how the coaching game in football, soccer, is kind of similar to what we saw in the NFL, the, the newest trend, right? The run and gun, the West Coast offense. But uh, the Zerbi has really put a wrinkle in a lot of coaches and their strategies, like Pep Guardiola, who's actually adapted to how the Zerbi plays. If you get a chance, make sure you maybe get a look. Uh, there's a good kind of explanation about how deserving and his strategy on YouTube, I think it's by Meta Football. It is it's pretty insane. Just on it's nerve wracking, I will tell you that. If you're yeah because you, you are basically saying let them come to you right and then it moves the pieces around. So you're you're asking them to try and dispossess you in your own defensive yeah. third. So sometimes you're gonna get dispossessed. Long throw. Not quite long enough. Well, the throw wasn't as long as they wanted by Gardner. And he'll get another try. Gardner from Lexington, North Carolina. Played for Wesleyan. 
was talking about how dangerous long throws are. I was speaking to Sam Staub with the Washington Spirit today. Played at Clemson. She is known for her long throws and they became a huge weapon for her and that's why she is a pro. 2-0, that's our score. As Wake Forest trying to make sure that there is no doubt that this one will get close. Oscar Sears sacrificing his stomach there. Blocking it. Didn't knock out his breath and he's still up the pitch. Carino, who's come in for Old Mitchell. That's a nice little different flavor of strikers between Rold and Leo. Both outstanding attackers. And the maestro in the middle is Swallet. Jeffrey White. White, right foot. Popped over the bar by Franzen. And let me tell you, my friends, that kid has got some distance. Yeah, this is a brilliant hit. He didn't have very, very many options. They were all defended, so he just said, all right, I'll take it myself. Tried to deliver a curler to the top right corner. That's a brilliant save by Franston. Really good. Full stretch, acrobatic, because otherwise that's destined for the back of the net. Oscar Sears. A little shove that wasn't called. But Jeffrey White, who actually trained with AS Roma's U13 group and the Tampa Bay Rowdies. He was highly recruited. Georgetown won him. Akron won him. Clemson. Virginia. All those were in contention for his services and he decided to come to Wake Forest. wonder if he got to meet Jose Mourinho. Probably a little, after little before. I'll have to find out what when that actually yeah. won. I think it was before Marino got there. Liberty still keeping with it. And again, 2 0 is a very dangerous score in soccer. And the Flames looking for one punch to connect. Good step by Prince and Ponza this time. Back to the support to Swallen. Swallen. We'll try to send this up the touchline for Wallent. Wallent, man, very close of hammering away the game winner uh, against Syracuse on Saturday night. We were talking about that right after the match was complete. Remember, Kyle, we were like, you're going through the motions, you feel it, you can taste it hitting your head and rippling the net. But of course, the brilliant goalkeeping. By Syracuse was able to cut that one out and keep it 1-1. Brings a double team. Talk about Deserby style and side net on the wrong side, but Wallen not at all phased with the double team there. Yeah, it looked like he saw the goalkeeper a bit off out of position and just tried to produce a hit at the near post. The window for that was really small, but it did look like there was a window because Franzen, when he got down to stop that, as the ball went by the post, he wasn't quite all the way at full stretch all the way over. So there might have been some room for that had it been on target. Wallen, who came over, he was actually a defender, but Bobby and the coaching staff have used him as an attacker. Remember when he got he kind of welcomed himself to Winston-Salem on that missile he hit against Air Force. You were on the call for that one. And he has patrolled that outside channel last year and again this year. Boy, Liberty's press. I said earlier they weren't pressing a ton and they weren't pressing very high. Well, now they are. They said this has been our best weapon so far. And whoo, look at Sidney Parrish. That's the only way you can stop him. I mean, he was full steam ahead. And he gets up and it'll be a yellow card. And that one, I believe, is to Swinehart. Talk about on your horse. Yeah. That, that was, I mean, he hit the nitrous. He did. And was flying through midfield. So I don't think the yellow card will be on Swinehart. I think it's 
Yeah, on Ty Conley, who just came into the match. Schweinhardt does not get the yellow, and Conley does. Conley, whose brother plays at UNCG, Ethan Conley. Here's Perez. Perez is part of the freshman class this season. Oscar Sears. Nice touch, able to settle. Carino, one touch, scooped right back. Jeffrey White scanning. One target in the box. There were targets waiting to get into the 18. And now Wake Forest will once again recycle, reset, and look straight to getting back into that attacking third. Leading 2-0. They want to leave no doubt that this is their match. There's Jeffrey White pinching in. Jeffrey White still with it. Ushering it over to the right. Sears to Wallet. Wallet left-footed shot. It's deflected high over the post, over the bar, pardon me, and it'll be a corner. Another corner for the Demon Deacons. They live down to the corner on Saturday night, Kyle. A, a team like, look at that back foot stop. Well done by Trot, but they live down the corner on Saturday night, and Syracuse is the king of corners coming into that match. Yeah, they more than doubled them up, I'm pretty sure. Sears off the bounce, headed, and Prince and Ponza ran out of Space back there, went out of bounds. Ten shots for the Demon Deacons and three for the Flames. Somehow made it through the yep. trees. That's a great header. Ponza just couldn't save it at the far post. Almost came off. And corners are so, it's, it's all time oriented too on whether that big wave of attack comes falling through. So it is like a timing device. And sometimes when that ball bounces out, it gets everything out of whack, and then you just have to improvise. But at least Perez was able to head one over to Prince and Ponza. He just was out of bounds. If you time it correctly, it's it's unstoppable. <laughs> Reno, he held there for a minute, and Liberty. Goes with a long ball over the top. We'll see what the Flames can do here with under a minute until halftime. Service ball. Oh, that was well placed. And on the other end of it was Kone and just hit it over the crossbar. Well played. Again, that was by Eberly on that service. Falling down with a left foot curler. Yeah, just couldn't get on top of it. That's easily Liberty's best chance in the match so far. Trey Salfin, with the clock ticking down, wants to push his team all the way up before he gives it a ride. And we're down to 10 seconds. Seven, six, five, four, three. This play, Garino salivating at it, but it goes on the clearance and out of here, and that is how we finish up the first chapter of this one. And the first 45, Roald Mitchell conference that's put together and has a lot of good, talented teams. Wake Forest looking to slam the door on any chance that Liberty could have here in the second half of making this a contest. We'll see how the first 10 minutes of this second half, where the energy level will be, because you know Liberty will be swarming around the field. 
searching and hunting for at least a goal. Find some kind of hope. And if you've got Huss there, which is wrestling to get the ball, you have a chance to score any time if you're in the attacking third. Rold Mitchell sitting on two goals. Hat trick watch once again. This time, two goals, not SPKs. Swallen will start the second half as well as Perez. Garrison Tubbs in the usual two center backs with Prince and Ponza. And Sidney Paris also getting the start on that outside left back position. What a spark he was on Saturday against Syracuse. Cooper Flax still keeping possession somehow. Cooper played almost, only really uh, one half of the first half, if you will, but he was very good. Probably he was trying to get some guys minutes. Swinehart. Cheeky play there. Forbes was anticipating that that ball would play back, and Swinehart figured it out. This time... Forbes gets in front and heads it over to Rold Mitchell. Rold Mitchell now to the final third. Draws the double team, looking for that left-footed cross. A diagonal pass maybe intended for Wallen or Perez. Swallen will keep it alive. And Lake Force once again resetting and working back into the attacking third. They'll play the support all the way back to Prince and Ponza. And that was all created off of the pressure by Jelani Forbes and Rold Mitchell. Those two guys never gave up on pressing the two Liberty defenders on this near side. Eventually won possession because they never backed off. Liberty has two shots on target, four total. And we're talking about how great the defense has been. They lead 2-0. Wake Forest looking for another shutout, but how dominant now they really rose to the occasion against Syracuse. It was they allowed four shots after that goal that Syracuse put in in the second minute. None of those were on target. And that last shot that the Orange put up was in the 69th minute. After that, nothing. I think that's also one of the tough things you have to swallow when you don't have overtime, right? It's because, especially for the home side, right? Because how they were in control, possession-wise, constantly in the attacking third. You just felt like they're just a half an inch away from making one point turn into three, and then you, it ends in a draw. Yeah, it's, it's tough because you really have just less time to find a, a winner, and it can make it tough when you're dominating a game, but just there feels like there's a lid on the goal. <laughs> Wake Forest outshot Syracuse 16 to 5 in that contest. And I know it's a different team from last season, but Ian McIntyre has his magic. He does have some key players from last season going into the transfer portal and bringing out some very talented players like Kalukian, who's got his first goal against this Wake Forest side. Highly recruited. Started off in Michigan and then got into the transfer portal and everybody wanted his services. He decided to go to Syracuse and kind of replace that front line of attack for Ian McIntyre after Levante Johnson, Mapoku, all left to the pros. And already getting results. Liberty seeping into the attacking third, coming out right in front of the six. A grab by Trey Salfin. Not allowing any Liberty Flame to get a look at it. Hey. 
I like the green jerseys too. Also, it um, does kind of stand out, so it helps you with your passing. Kinda, you know, it's you don't have to pennies. look up to see yeah. where your teammates are. That's right. You can see it out of the corner of your eye. That's very, very bright. Those green jerseys, of course, and an auction for mental health awareness and all proceeds will benefit the Trinity Center. That's one thing that's overlooked, though, is the mental health. And as uh, Kyle said, it means a lot to us back here at the booth and are glad that this Wake Forest team and staff has decided to have a game to it, show yeah. their support. And, and it, you know, it goes towards a, a really great cause of, of helping the Trinity Center to provide counseling for uninsured and underinsured individuals, and, and it, that's so huge. Uh, you know, I would, I would encourage everyone to seek counseling, whether you feel like it's something that you need imminently in your life or not. It's something that's helped me greatly and and it's a positive for everybody out there and everyone should have access to it. So it's, it really is truly a, a wonderful cause because it can help people on a wide variety of, of, of platforms. Sydney Parrish coming in, taking that one away from Farmer. Uh, look at Coach Moose, always, he likes the dunks. Once again, rocking some green dunks here. Those are fly. <laughs> God, I said fly. I love it, I love it. <laughs> I, I'm a fan. Uh, are they the dunks or are they the uh, Jordan 1? Look at, he's gotta, gotta make sure they're perfectly spotless left-footed corner curling and this will result in a goal as set pieces have become an issue is kind of gone away but this time Lucas Kelly it was essential that Liberty could bounce back early in the first half and they go to their freshman Lucas Kelly who's able to find the back of the net and now we got a contest after Wake Forest looked like they were going to go away with this one. Yeah, and all he does is back his defender down. Well, I, I thought he had backed a, a Wake Forest defender down. Instead, he just positions himself perfectly to get on the end of that delivery at the top of the six-yard box. And moving your body away from goal like that and still managing to get the header on target is so difficult. Defenders are taught to keep yourself between the man and the goal because worst case they have to lean back to reach the delivery that's exactly what he did and still managed to deliver it perfectly to the far post they can't quite rule out liberty on the fight especially with the experience they have of course the goal they get is by their freshman lucas kelly and now that uh, confidence and momentum slowly shifts to the visitors. Wake Forest wanted to make sure that there was no doubt in this one. We'll have to try to fight and get back that two goal lead in that two goal cushion. Of course, we'll watch number nine. His hold up play is exceptional with his back to goal. That's such a weapon. Forbes with some juice, trying to get down that flank. Cutting that one out, Sydney Paris. Maybe that was intended for a one-two from Forbes to Sydney Paris. As Paris gets stood up, and Forbes is kind of looking for a call. Yeah, it was good physical defending by Liberty. Right move for the referee not to blow the whistle there. Forbes has the pace, but he was outdone that time by Swinehart's physicality. Scrabano back in for the Deeks. Takes the place of Bo Cummins. Good, good, good. 
Wake Forest fans are, will be interested to see after the Demon Deacons were starting to get into cruise control, leading 2 0. And then after allowing an early goal in the second half, how will they, the Demon Deacons, respond? Yeah, and Liberty, you know, it, it they've been knocking on the door a couple times. They haven't been able to produce shots on goal, but they have been able to cause problems and cause some chaos along the deep back line. And you thought if they were able to capitalize on some of those, that sure enough, they'd find to the back of the net. Watch Huss tangled up there in the top of the 18, right there in the middle. As well as watches the watch the freshman this is banged up in the air, still inside the mixer. Uh, just a little overcooked, which allows Trace Alfin to play it off the bounce. Christian Escribano comes in for Bo Cummins. Threads that one to Flax. Flax sprays this one right up for Wallet to run on. The target is there. Rolled Mitchell and well cut out. Is that Swinehart again? Well, you yes. can you can never fault a player for delivering a feed to a, a goal hawk like Rolled Mitchell, but he had Jelani Forbes unmarked at the far post if he could have just waited a beat or two for Forbes to arrive. He had nobody within five yards of him. Sydney Paris, Jake Swallen, Garrison Tubbs, and Prince and Ponza, as well as Rold Mitchell, all there in the 18, lined up almost back to back as targets for the cross on the corner. It's cut out, but right back into the mixer, and Rold Mitchell plays it back to Wallen to send it right back and watch this wave of attack. Here's Sidney Paris and it bangs and it threads past the keeper and in for the third goal of this contest. And once again, Sidney Paris, the energy spark, gets another one. This is just how you draw this up. I mean, Bobby Muse will be thrilled with this goal. A simple back post run a, a ball on a platter and Sydney Paris wins it expertly and, and crashes at home. Goalkeeper gets a touch, just not enough. I mean, that is a, a perfect play creation and execution. Wonderful ball, right? There's three deeks there. Pick your poison. And it's Sydney Paris who gets on the end of it. Credit the other two in Tubbs and Forbes who let him have it because if those two guys challenge for the ball not knowing who's going to go for it and who's not it can mess up the chance and Sidney Paris finishes he is a goal threat and a little bit of issues whoa look out you cannot go into the official like that that is problematic wow and I would be stunned if well, I'll say that again. That, that might be even more than a yellow card. How? At, at least from what I've been. How is a red card not produced yeah, there? Coach Moose is saying the same thing. Yeah, I mean, he just came crashing into the official. Watch from out right here. You can't you can't go into the official. You're not supposed to even make contact yeah, he with made the official. Contact twice. But he tried to go through the official. That's Lucas Kelly. I mean... He'll get a yellow card for his, his reaction there, but, I mean, that was so aggressive. There's no room for that. Officials are usually very cautious about contact made. Even the slightest bit of contact with an official, they're careful about because, you know, they're trying to, it's one on 22, yeah. you know, or one on 11. And it puts them in a really difficult spot. Very lucky to still be on the field. Only five minutes, though, between the goal by Liberty and Lucas Kelly and then the goal by Sidney Paris. So that response and it took five minutes for the Demon Deacons. Still in a heated battle because here comes a set piece, and Liberty has been very effective 
in their set pieces. As Finley will be the one doing the honors. Gabe Finley, high arcing ball as Roll Mitchell gets there to play defense. And up and over, and that will be a foul as Forbes. Fortunately, he's all right. Yeah, Sam Farner just ducked underneath the Forbes. You can't do that. Sometimes referees will give yellow cards for that too because it's incredibly dangerous. Forbes goes up for the header and Farner just never goes up with him, ends up ducking underneath. Guys can get hurt doing that. And, and we saw that in the Syracuse game. Garrison Tubbs got called for a foul. It ended up with Bobby Muse getting a yellow card on the touchline because he was arguing the call. Tubbs got called for the foul when his defender ducked underneath yeah. and he did it again. And this time Liberty gets the call. Yeah, it's it because it's Forbes not over the, the back. That Forbes got got contact with the ball first. Right. But not in that case too, got the ball first before the contact. I mean a tough play. I mean from his vantage point it might be tough for him to to see that, but once again it goes in against Wake Forest and 3-1 is our score. Hitting 30 minutes remaining. And this has kind of been a slugfest. Wake Forest, two big haymakers by Earl Mitchell. They led 2-0 at the break. And thought things were looking. I think it was going to be an easy second half. But Liberty, with that experience and those weapons that they possess, are able to get an early goal. And... One thing you have to do if you allow an early goal in the second half is get one right back. And Wake Forest took five minutes, about five minutes for them to respond to get back that two-goal cushion. That's where we sit 3-1. Roll Mitchell still on a brace. So we'll let you know if... Number nine will get another hat trick on his account as a Demon Deacon. That'll be his third, which is it's kind of surreal if that actually becomes reality. A kid who plays uh, at Wake Forest and gets three hat tricks in his career as Forbes. Got behind that line, gives it to Cooper Flax. Cooper Flax looking for the return. Here it is, and there it, oh, it almost went in. Cooper Flax's luck. Oh, that ball was on its way in, and even Perez had a look at it, and still Cooper Flax is denied. Well, it's Lucas Kelly who, who's lucky to be on the field right now with the, the heroic clearance off the line, and you are right. I mean, he just can't buy a goal right now clean through on goal goalkeeper slows it down and then the clearance off the line beautiful one two though that's exactly what you want to see from yeah that if was, you're the head coach bobby muse that is beautiful play that combination was destined for a another knockout blow but liberty once again Searching to get within one. Sydney Paris, long ball up ahead. Here's Rolf Mitchell coming off his line. Is the keeper, Franzen. Franzen, who stays in. Let's take a look at this combination. I one. mean, Rolf Mitchell just playing provider. That is heroic at the end. Twice yep. he clears it. Body on the line. I thought the goalkeeper got a cut, a touch there, but doesn't look like it. Now it looks like Lucas Kelly's hurt. It's, I think this stems from that, from exactly from that. I, I think that second clearance where Paris comes crashing in trying to put it into the net mm -hmm. looked like he took a real blow to his hip, and I wonder if that's what he's dealing with right now. Kelly from Wake Forest, North Carolina. Freshman. You see... Makes the, the block there and then the right there. That's awkward. It looks like I thought I thought that it's uh it's glue it's yeah uh, Jose Perez that 
I thought he hit him in the in the hip, but it looks like he may have taken it, you know, in the muscle right. in, instead of on the bone. And the gluteus maximus. Kelly, who is 19th ranked by top drawer soccer in the South Atlantic region prospect, coming in, played at Charlotte FC as well as North Carolina FC. Was captain of the Charlotte FC U17 team. Also made the Generation Adidas Cup MLS Next Cup Tournament quarterfinals. And his dad played soccer at Delaware. I'll be surprised if Kelly doesn't come back. Good to see Baba Niang out on the pitch after missing a couple games. It comes right in and immediately wins a foul. And we're going to check the temperature of Baba Niang. As he's been anxious to get on the pitch, and now here he is. About 26 minutes remaining. His team leading by two goals. Yang now with yellow boots. They have those pink boots, and Yang, such a fun player to watch. He really is. And That's the best way to describe him, Ty, is fun. And he's a great human being off the field, too. I like to call him a game breaker. He, I mean, he just he causes so much havoc in midfield. I know Bobby Muse wants him to join the, the system a little bit more, but the things that he can do on the ball are truly sensational. Forbes left-footed cross. Mitchell was lurking. Yeah, he can take over a game, and now we got two players down. Forbes is down. I don't know if they knocked knees or not, but Forbes looks to be okay. He went in with Stricker, who actually just came on. Good sportsmanship by Forbes hovering over just to see if he needs his assistance. Yeah, and this is going to be tough for Liberty to sort through. You know, down 3-1, still lots of time left to maybe get something out of this. But if they go home without a, a haul from this game and a couple injuries to boot, that'll be tough to swallow as they move forward towards conference play. Oh, no one will see that. Hopefully he'll be all right. Not been able to put down that left foot stricker. Well, like I just mentioned, just came in from Dallas, Texas last season. Had 13 starts and had one assist. He assisted on a huge goal, the tie at Maryland. As team captain of the U-17 soccer team, which is... Uh, of course, a lot of people know the Solar Soccer Club and also was a kicker on his high school football team. I just hate seeing that. It's nothing more frustrating than just getting into the match and then having to leave on an injury. Yeah, a couple of guys on this wake team will know how that feels. Mm -hmm. It can be a long journey sometimes from, hopefully it's not what it looks like, but sometimes it can be a long journey back from those long-term injuries. A couple of starters back in the game for the Deeks, Jose Kojima, Ian Mogara. Trying to send it across, and Toro was knocked and denied by Sidney Paris. There's another freshman on this Liberty team, scored 45 goals during two seasons of prep school. That's outstanding. He's part of this freshman class that came in. It will result in another corner for Liberty. See if Wake Forest can defend the set pieces. Swinehart crashing in. 
Roald Mitchell lost it. And now Liberty in another good position in, on the field. And they're attacking third. Had enough time to send one across into the box. On the turnover. Now Liberty once again building. A lot of green jerseys. Let's see what happens. There's Toro. Wonderful job. Ponce trying to thread that one straight up the middle to Roald Mitchell. Here's Kojima. That was really good defending by Ponce. 23 and a half remaining. The Deacons three. The Flames one. Ponce here on this left flank. Sydney Paris. Once again, maybe hit the brakes and then got knocked in the back, fell down. Liberty in their wins, they outscored their opponents 15 to six. Only had one loss in this or this season. Trying to get back to the NCAA tournament. They have not been, and I had to double check this, they have not been to the tournament since 2011. The first season was 1979, and Ponce, did he keep that alive? Well, I guess not, just barely got out of bounds. Good hustle by Ponce. Yeah, he managed to get there, it just kind of bounced awkwardly on him. A couple more subs. And talked to a similar 2021, 2023 is. Chase Oliver comes in. And then Gora Gora, who was one of the heroes in that upset in 2021. But Liberty enters this contest at 5-1. It's the first time that they've started since the 2021 season. 21 spring season, pardon me. It's 6-0-1. Of course, that was the the COVID-adjusted schedule where it went fall in spring. That was glorious. Even with the even with the the, the coronavirus, it was still nice to see a fall and then spring soccer because it was all year long. A lot of fans enjoyed that. Hint, hint. Let's uh, maybe make that reality with fall and spring. Yes, sir. All for it. Every coach is for it. Every, Can't like, find everybody. We've we haven't found a single coach that we've yep. talked to that, that said they don't like it. Yep. And it's perfect. You get those guys know the game. Long throw in, flicked on. And is Toro trying to set one up? Still, right outside of the 18, and a blast by Kone. Smacks Sydney Paris on the backside. Well done by Sydney Paris to get the block in there, but Deeks still just look really scattered, clearing set pieces. They, they've not been able to get those set pieces out of the danger zone effectively. Julian Kennedy comes in for Roald Mitchell. So some fresh legs for Coach Muse. Bob and Yang. Finally returning back to the pitch. Julian Kennedy has a knack of scoring. Can he do it here? Croft put a nice little step over and he blasts one and it's knocked away. Well done by Franzen again. That, I think this game really could have Wake Forest with what, five goals by now, but Franzen has kept it just 3-1. This is a sensational save. He has no time to make that stop and react to the shot. Unbelievable save. I mean, it looks like that's where Kennedy's going, but he doesn't telegraph the shot. He very well could have gone near post there right. and just tried to slot it in. So goalkeeper really has to maintain both posts. That's an incredible save. Six targets in the box. Maybe possible seven. Ponce will take it. Out swinger. Into the box and Julian Kennedy straight out of the air, but sent it over the crossbar. Couldn't quite get down on it. Got that inside of his foot, Ponce. 
was talk, now talking with Baba Niang on maybe where the run was supposed to be. Carnes has come in. Betts has come in. Finley, the coach's son, comes back in. We talked to Coach about that. And, and here's an answer that actually makes a lot of sense and kind of surprised me. He said, if I didn't bring him on at Liberty, there was no chance I was going to be able to see any collegiate games he was going to be a part of, Travis Smith Jr. So you bring him on on your team. But I love the fact that they make this contract each year. That was really, really creative and made a lot of sense, too. They make a contract about the son player relationship, right? And yeah. every year you sign it, it's like, I don't want to know anything about personal, social life of the guys. It's when I'm coach, I'm coach. When I'm dad, I'm dad. Yeah, and, and you know, that's come to light recently in, in college athletics because Deion Sanders has talked a lot about it. He's got multiple kids. Who's that? On the, uh, yeah, <laughs> only the most famous guy in college yeah. sports right now, yeah. Or the, the biggest buzz name in, in college sports. He, he's got a number of kids on the team, and he's talked about it. He said he and uh, his kids take a walk from the bench to the end zone and then back to the bench before every game. And he says, on the way down, I'm dad. On the way back, I'm coach. It's a and nice little switch. Yeah. Idea. And it, it really does, it creates that boundary between the two so that they don't bleed over one into the other and allows you to have a, a tangible moment of, ter of flipping that switch. It's, it, you know, here with Liberty, they sign that contract. It's the same concept that you say, hey, these are our boundaries. And creating boundaries in a unique situation like that is very important. Well, he definitely doesn't take any time off, this kid, because he is, as soon as he gets in, it's, he's like Sonic the Hedgehog running all over the place. Sydney Paris will take the free kick here. Finley was as a senior out of Lynchburg, Virginia. Kennedy getting behind the back line. And now turns something out of nothing, maybe. Is Ponce. A nice stop. He can be get very creative, and his lateral movement is. World class. That was clearly a foul. Ponce's been <laughs> frustrated. A lot of hand fighting and tugging. Cool to see Travis Smith Jr. in there. He played excellently while Prince and Ponza was out. And that just adds to the depth. I mean, we talked about the depth of this team. I mean, Coach Muse might he might disagree that the depth's there. I think that is. I mean, but you add Travis Smith Jr. as a freshman who gets some quality minutes when Prince and Ponza wasn't 100%, and now you can feel comfortable bringing him in. Right. And, and I mean, there is just, that and, toolbox is just full. It is seeping over. It's, that's how full it is with the talent and players that are on this Wake Forest team. And what's great about the minutes here for Travis Smith Jr. is it's tough to get center backs minutes because the starters play most games and and large minutes and so to get Travis Smith Jr. in the game is positive especially because he played so well it's harsh on him that he hasn't played much because Prince and Ponza is the starter. Well, Travis Smith Jr., part of this freshman class, ranked ninth in the country, and Lake Forest always used to having top ten recruiting classes. There's the man that is largely in charge of that. And this is another set piece in a corner flicked on over the bar, and that uh, gave Dane Brenner a little bit of uh, anxiety there. You could see him coaching. I mean, really, I've said this many times, but Wake Forest is fortunate to have. You talk about being deep as far as personnel they're deep on coaching too as 
You can watch that instant replay on Travis Smith Jr. Yeah, you just you can't have a guy that free on a set piece, especially on a delivery that's short to the near post. There's got to be somebody there to clear that delivery. Now here comes the disruption part. Where 14, little over 14 minutes. And you're gonna see oh. a lot. I was ambitious. Yeah, a lot of attempts of disruption in the back by the Liberty Flames on a possible attempt of a bicycle there. Yeah, Liberty has been excellent all game at disrupting the wake possession in its own defensive third or defensive half. It just haven't been able to produce chances off of Swihart. He did have a good look and also got a good contact. Still, this is a very nervy moment. As Kojima finding nobody making a run, he was between him and three Liberty players. Still able to move it back and then reset. Here comes that disruptive press. Now Deacons. They're kind of mis uh, they're kind of scattered a little bit, and there's an offside flag, and even Trace Alfin is showing his frustration on some of the defense. Maybe they just need to get locked back in. Yeah, there's just some lapses in concentration here. That's I mean that's clear. Yeah, that's clear as day. That there's an offside there, but in midfield, you've got Liam O'Gara, who I think expected a Liberty player to meet a ball with his head. It never came, and O'Gara just watched the ball go by him as a result. So, you know, there's, and it's not just him, you know, I don't want to single a guy out, but that's, it's just one example of where things are getting uh, messy. They're getting chaotic, and that's what Liberty wants. Deeks have got to settle things down. And his crucial 12 minutes, Lake Forest would really like that dagger with the fourth goal of this contest and not allow Liberty to sniff an opportunity to possibly tie it with tie. a goal soon. And then that obviously will notch up the confidence and Liberty with confidence is scary. That's and, and, why they're on that streak. And Ty, you know, this is, if nothing else, obviously the Deeks will want to get out of here with, with a win. That's the most important thing here. but. This is also probably very good preparation for what's to come next, and that's Clemson. They are well known for their overwhelming press. It's a lot more active than we've seen from Liberty. And just inches away from making it 3-2, and the back line is in a disarray. Yeah, you, you take another look at this. This is from a tight angle. Garrison Tubbs beat, and that just goes wide the post. So, but just to finish that, you know, like Clemson is difficult, always difficult to play. And so while this Liberty press has been more in certain spurts, uh, it this is very good preparation for playing a team like Clemson. Kennedy, Ponce's there, Kennedy. Going near stick and a kick save by Franzen. That angle, maybe not really advise that, but Kennedy, he'll get the green light, and try to fire him, try to escape that one between the keeper in that near stick. Ponce was maybe the only intended target, and that will result in a corner again for the Demon Deacons. And Ponce will, will take it, the Boston College transfer. And it's Tubbs, Swallen, Kennedy, Travis Smith Jr., Baba Niang will come out for the short option. It looks like Kojima will kind of time his run if he does come into the 18. Sent well. Swallen did have a chance at it. Niang comes right back out with it. Niang can create, and so can Swallen. Swallen spits it out to the left. Here's Chase Oliver. He goes down. Referee says play on. Here comes the long ball. It'll be a track meet. And somehow Farmer was able to put a foot on it in between two Wake Forest defenders. And first of all, that corner delivery just 
too short. But Baba Niang makes something out of nothing there and nearly picks the pocket of the Liberty defense and creates another opportunity. Chase Oliver just fell down. I, I don't think there was enough in that to, to blow the whistle. It looked like he just got his feet tangled. I know some players in green jerseys probably disagree. The end goes out. Garino comes back in. This game is end to end right now. We haven't quite seen the beast awake or woken with Baba Niang, but I feel like it's coming a matter of time. As he finally got a chance to put his boots on the pitch. And like you said, Kyle, I mean, he is somebody that can turn the game quickly. Just under eight and a half, quick throw it. Deacons looking to make this four to one. They beat Gardner Webb this time last week, four nil. They beat Furman five one and a yellow card will be assessed to Swallen, I believe. Yep, just a tactical foul there. He got turned around and had to drag his defender or his man down. This bit. A professional foul. Spun got around and yeah, pull him back. Yep. So yellow card to Swallen. Cindy Paris. Sidney Paris gets dropped immediately by Farmer. Sidney Paris, I think, was waiting for that. Kind of the way he positioned himself. Doesn't seem to be shaken up at all. Here's Travis Smith Jr. able to escape and well played again by Finley. Right when you think that you have that passing lane open, Finley immediately comes in like a safety. And gets his foot on it. Seven and a half. Up to Kennedy. Kennedy. Ponce. That was a difficult pass for Ponce to settle. Well done by Chase Oliver on reading that. Chase Oliver. He will run all over the pitch. It's a good chance to see the depth of this Wake Forest team. As we mentioned, there are a lot of their starters that are getting some rest. Chase Oliver, who's come in, gets pulled down and looking for maybe a card on Eberly. Clock ticks down at six and a half. Unlucky touch there by Sidney Parrish. Yeah, the goals we've had in this contest this Tuesday night till it's been rolled Mitchell in the first half. There was a chance by Cooper Flax is dying to get into the net. Roll Mitchell put two in tonight. And he is now getting a rest, so we most likely will not see him get a chance to get a Hattrick, there's Sidney Paris answering right back after that goal in the 53rd minute by Liberty and Kelly. And Sidney Paris off the bench comes in. Well, actually, he started in the second half, comes in and gets back that two goal lead. Had a crucial goal against Syracuse. So it was back to back rolled Mitchell, then Lucas Kelly, the freshman, first goal of the season, off a set piece, and then Sidney Paris four minutes later. Clemson will be here on Friday night. It'll be on the ACC main network. Go there! 
Wake Forest looking for their first ACC win. And a loss and a tie this season. But as you mentioned, as we saw the standings, seems like everybody's in that boat. Yeah. <laughs> Say Syracuse with two ties in the ACC. Two hard fought draws. Yep. With Louisville and Wake Forest. Gardner-Webb has been on the front foot of this last past 10, 15 minutes in the second half. It's Liberty. Pardon me. Did I say Gardner-Webb? Jeez. Yeah, Liberty. It's the other red team. But Liberty has really been in charge here in the second half. On at least last 10 minutes. Yes, I, mean, I think, about, I think yeah. the desperation has started to set in knowing they need two goals. I, I wouldn't say they've been in charge this whole second half. I would say this entire game, right. they have done very well to make a mess of things for the Deeks in possession. I think maybe better than anybody they've played so far, at least here at Spry. Yeah, they have definitely made it uncomfortable for the Demon Deacons here trying to finish off this match. As we mentioned earlier, this the Wake Forest has not beaten Liberty since 1999. This is the seventh meeting between the two teams. The complexion, definitely big change from what we have witnessed the majority of this game. Kyle, just with trips after trips into the attack in third for Wake Forest, and now the Demon Deacons kind of sitting there with their back against the wall as Liberty is allowed to move up into their final third. I don't think that if this does result and what the score line says right now, three to one, I don't think the Demon Deacons, at least on their body language, look like they have won the match just on how things have developed towards the end of the second half. No, but with the schedule they have, win, wins right. a wins a win. Yeah, I mean, exactly, exactly. But you, you know how many years we've watched and, and covered this team. It's you know, They allow one goal, and it's like a 3-1 lead, and you think that... They lost the match. They they pride themselves off of it. Coach Muse at, at training yesterday was not excited with the energy and kind of cut early. Said, look, guys, I need some energy. If I'm not going to have it, let's go home. And right there, that is a message sent to your team. And I applaud it, and I think it's worked. Definitely on how this Wake Forest team has come out. They shot out of this like a cannon, and at least in the first half, getting those goals with Roald Mitchell and leading the way they did. And like you said, I mean, it's going to change a little bit because now you have to start thinking about Friday with Clemson coming and resting some of your players. So you don't have quite the normal personnel in there. But, I mean, it's, it's a coaching tactic that I definitely applaud. And Coach Muse is... He wants it. I mean, he, you know, you got to have that straight up Red Bull energy every time in training because it is nonstop. And if you don't have it, Coach Moose is not a very happy camper. As this one is right in the six and flicked on, and Trace Alfin lays on it. I thought there was an offside in that, too. Yeah, I think Garrison the, Tubbs did as well, but. Nine, eight, Looks like seven, they six, let it go. Five, so we will four, not see a hat trick three, by Roald Mitchell. Two, one, we will not see the fourth goal by the Demon Deacons in this Tuesday night tilt. But the